The Hermana Way. Building a better world through a better you. Apart, we can make an effort, but together, we can make a difference. DMT is uh, astonishingly widely available in plants and animals all, all around the world, but so far, nobody really knows why it's there or what its, or what its function is. Tryptophan is an amino acid, of course, and it's everywhere. It's one of the, the 20 that goes up to make proteins. So all organisms have tryptophan. And all organisms have the, the two key enzymes that lead to the synthesis of DMT. We know maybe 150 species of plants, for example, that contain DMT. Uh, that's only because we've looked for it. I'm utterly convinced that there are thousands of species of plants that contain it that we just don't know about because nobody's bothered to look. These are messenger molecules and they, th this is what plants use to mediate their relationships with other organisms in the environment. Maybe what it is is a, a uh, essentially a, a pheromone or a hormone that uh, mediates the plant's relationship with the primates. Why should a molecule that is found universally in nature, you know, when it, uh, when it comes in contact with a complex primate nervous system, show you, uh, you know, images of aliens and machines and, uh, and things like that. I mean, is, are, is it trying to tell us something? The brain only actively transports substances into its confines that it seems to need, like blood sugar, certain amino acids, things like that. And um, there were a couple of Japanese studies in the 1970s or so where they demonstrated that DMT is actively transported into the brain. DMT is very mysterious and it's operative in all of our neural systems. The various speculations on endogenous DMT that it modulates dreams, for example, we look at the origins of the pineal gland as an organ of sense, that it was a, was a sense organ, uh, and that in evolutionary older animals it actually has, a, I think, a lens and a, and a cornea and a, and a retina. Um, maybe that's what it still is. Uh, maybe uh, what DMT is offering us is a different modality of perception. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence that would support um, a pineal site of DMT synthesis um, that hasn't been established yet, but um, that there were enough pieces of the puzzle that seemed to be fitting together. One thing about DMT is it's very short acting. Um, so it is made in the human body. Um, might not be made in the pineal, nobody's really looked that carefully. Uh, but it's made in lung, it's made in uh, adrenal gland, it's made in red blood cells, it's made in brain. Um, it's made in liver. Um, and one interesting, th and it's broken down very quickly, there's an enzyme in the body called monoamine oxidase. Um, and that breaks down DMT within a few minutes of its, you know, formation. Through some amazing feat of pre-literate chemistry, the Amazonian natives stumbled upon or combined whatever. Um, I don't know how they did it, but they found that one plant contains DMT and one plant contains an enzyme inhibitor. Combine them, you can drink DMT and it's orally active. So it starts working in a half hour, it lasts for three or four hours, and um, you can you know, maneuver a lot more comfortably within that state than you can when you're just smoking it or injecting it. Ayahuasca is much harder for um, the power structures that we have now, it's much harder for them to put down because it has been part of a legitimate religious and spiritual practice for thousands of years, certain, certainly in the Amazon. When you take it in physiologically, you know, large doses beyond what, what, it would, what would happen endogenously, uh, then you see this full manifestation of the effect. 